Hi everyone, in this video I want to talk about how you find the domain of a function, especially as it relates to inequalities. So uh, you remember that the domain of a function is the set of real number inputs that will give real number outputs. And as uh, at this stage in algebra, and, uh, the only thing you really have to be concerned about is number one, you can't divide by zero, and number two, you don't want to take square roots of negative numbers. So this first example here, uh, the, there would be a danger of dividing by zero if this denominator ended up being zero. So in this case, I, I know that um, I want, I, let's just write it out, let's say I don't want, I don't want x plus 3 to equal 0. I don't want x to be, therefore, negative 3. Okay, so your domain is going to be the set of x such that x does not equal negative 3. And obviously if I plug negative 3 in over here I'm going to get 2 divided by 0 and that would be undefined. Alright, now it did ask us to give it an interval notation so in this case <clears throat> if here's my number line here it's a little thick okay then um, I want my domain to be all the numbers except negative 3. So I'll draw negative 3 here and and uh, it can be anything except that point. So it could be anything smaller than negative 3 or it could be anything bigger than negative 3 as well. Okay, so so this would be in uh, the way I would graph the domain is basically everything except that one little point and so in interval notation that'd be the interval from minus infinity to minus 3 union from minus 3 to infinity and you can see that's actually quite a lot more clunky than just using the set builder notation which is why we have both so that we can use whichever one is the easiest for us to write. Now in the second function down here I have a square root and I don't want to take the square root of a negative number. I'm going to I'm going to just state it differently. In this case, I want I want my radicand, the thing that's under the radical. I can only take square roots of non-negative numbers. So I want that x minus two to be greater than or equal to zero. All right. So that just means x has to be greater than or equal to two. And you if you plug in and like for example two, I'd get two minus two is zero. Square root of zero is zero. That's okay. If I plug in 3, 3 minus 2 is 1, uh, square root of 1 is 1, that's, that's going to work out. But if I plug in something smaller than 2, like say 1, 1 minus 2 is negative 1, the square root of negative 1 is not a real number. Okay, so in this case my, my domain is going to be the x greater than or equal to 2. So again in interval notation I would want to picture it this way. Here's the number 2, I want the x's greater than or equal to that so my my answer in interval notation would be from 2 to infinity okay and in this last problem uh, I'll do it exactly the same way I did the previous one it's just that in this example up here you could play just guess and check and probably figure out that the x's have to be greater than or equal to 2 to work. Down here that's not that simple but if you do uh, what we did above again you just want your integrand or the radicand here you just want the 8 minus 5x to be greater than or equal to 0 and then you can forget about all this up here and just solve this inequality. So I want my 8 greater than or equal to 5x and if you divide both sides by 5 you'll get your x is less than or equal to 8 fifths. Alright, so again this is written sort of in Hebrew. Let's turn around English. I want my x less than or equal to 8 fifths. So let's think of that in uh, terms of the number line. Um, here's my number 0. 8 fifths is over here somewhere to the right of 0. I want the x is less than or equal. That means to the left of 8 fifths. So in interval notation this would be the interval from minus infinity to 8 fifths. So as long as I plug in any number uh, to the left of, of 8 fifths 
like say 1, notice that uh, 8 fifths is 1 and 3 fifths. I plug in 1, I'm good, right? 8 minus 5 times 1, uh, that would be the square root of 3. I can take the square root of 3 as 1.7 something. Um, if I plug in uh, 2 though, 2 is outside of um, that interval, right? It's a little bigger than 8 fifths. 8 minus 5 times 2, oop, that's going to give me 8 minus 10 is 8, uh, negative 2. Can't take square roots of negative 2. How about if I plug in a negative number? This says I can plug negative numbers. How about if I plug in negative 1? Well, I'd get 8 minus 5 times negative 1. Negative 5 times negative 1 is actually a positive 5, and that would give me 13 for the radic radicand. Uh, square root of 13 is, is, is going to be something between 3 and 4. All right, so uh, that's how we use inequalities to solve for the domain, especially for a function with a radical uh, in it.